Right on schedule. So I'm going to sound like I'm repeating myself again, but uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> it was exit stage right. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was a good, uh, good session. Thank you. Uh, so I'm going, to, I'm going to repeat myself all day because uh, today our goal was to um, ingrain in our next premier the importance and significance of mid-sized cities and our caucus and how we see a relationship moving forward with the new government. So we're welcoming Mr. David Kahn, leader of the Alberta Liberal Party. A little bit about David. He has a chemistry degree and a Juris Doctor degree in law and has studied and worked all over Canada and in Europe. He is currently a practicing lawyer with a focus on Indigenous rights and land claims. He has represented clients at all levels of court in, in Canada, as well, as well as before regulatory and administrative tribunals and private arbitrations. David serves on the National Board of Results Canada, an NGO dedicated to eliminating poverty and increasing health outcomes and acts as legal counsel pro bono for a number of groups, including fighting for affordable housing for a group of vulnerable Calgarians. David Kahn was elected leader of the Alberta Liberal Party in June 2017. Please welcome David to the podium. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Good morning and thank you very much for having me here. I want to acknowledge that we're on Treaty 7 land, and as an Indigenous rights lawyer, I've devoted my career to building fair, sensitive, and proper outcomes uh, for, on issues facing Indigenous peoples. And I, was, uh, I grew up just down the road here in the Northwest Calgary community of uh, Silver Springs, or as uh, Mayor Jeff Janung will say, uh, a suburb of Cochrane. And I heard, uh, I heard the rumor last night he's planning on annexing Market Mall next for those juicy taxes. <laughs> Don't want to spread any rumors. Albertans are heading into one of the most important and potentially one of the nastiest provincial elections in recent history. It is a challenging time for our Alberta economically, socially, and environmentally. The stakes are high. It is vital that we have calm, responsible, and supportive political leadership with calm, responsible, and supportive policies that benefit all Albertans. That includes working with our municipal partners like the mayor, you the mayors in this room and your chief administrative officers. Let me briefly summarize that Alberta Liberals will collaborate with all of you to support building strong, safe, and resilient communities with a provincially legislated, predictable, and stable funding source. We will work together to diversify the economy and attract investment with financial incentives, tax reforms, and reduction of regulation. We will push to boost opportunities for transportation growth and infrastructure by utilizing carbon taxes re uh, revenues wisely. We place a priority on community safety and developing a policing strategy that meets your needs. You can review my detailed responses to these issues in the party leader questions that I hope were, was distributed to you uh, last night or this morning. Albertans will have a clear choice. There is a party on the right, there's a party on the left, or the Alberta Liberal Party. We are the party in the middle. Alberta Liberals are going to run a positive campaign with policies that will improve the quality of life for all Albertans. We will, maintain, we will have a solutions-based platform that will create jobs and maintain social programs. We will also closely evaluate our spending on health, social services, and education to ensure cost-effective and world-class delivery of services with a heavy emphasis on more frontline resources. We are not going to play the blame game. We are not going to resort to hyper-partisan name-calling and finger-pointing, like some of the other political parties. 
That is an insult to voters. Albertans are sick and tired of that nasty approach to politics. Alberta Liberals are too busy working on solutions uh, for Albertans to play that nasty kind of politics. As leader of the Alberta Liberal Party, I promise you we will focus on what is most important, making life better for all Albertans. We want to create jobs. We know Albertans want to work. We want to get them back to work. The economy is struggling for the past three years or so. It's especially been bad this last year. We don't have all the answers, but we are willing to take bold new steps to get the economy back on track. Alberta Liberals support the Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion. It will bring good paying jobs. It will bring higher revenue for our energy resources to help pay for our social programs. It is the safest way to bring our responsibly produced energy products to new world markets. Let's stop blaming each other for stalling this project. Let's work together to get this project built. Without jobs and a strong economy, we can't support our families or pay for the public programs and infrastructure Albertans want and deserve. Alberta Liberals will deliver policies to support bar small business, to, to support business and diversify our economy. Policies such as a three-year business small business tax holiday for new small business startups, or tax credits to support the growth of sectors like our film and television industry, legal cannabis industry, and high tech, including the energy industry clean tech. You may have recently read news stories that about half of Albertans don't have more than $200 extra available to pay their bills. Clearly, people are struggling, and we recognize that. Alberta Liberals want to put more money back into people's pockets. We will reduce personal income taxes for lower income Albertans while raising them on the highest income tax brackets. Those Albertans can pay, afford to pay a little bit more. We will not bring in a sales tax. Albertans are telling me and the Liberal Party they do not want a sales tax, and we are listening to Albertans. The Alberta Liberal Party will improve access to quality, cost-effective health care. Albertans do not want to wait for hours in emergency rooms to get admitted to a hospital. They don't want to wait for months or even years for important procedures. We will develop a pharmacare program and cap dental fees to make them more affordable and available to more Albertans. We will also boost mental health and addiction services and increase availability of those treatment programs. We will tackle the opioid crisis head on and get results by deploying a four pillars drug strategy that includes reduction, pre prevention, treatment, and enforcement. We will finally declare, unlike this NDP government, that the opioid crisis is a public health state of emergency and we've got to address it as such. We will reduce classroom sizes. Our children cannot get a quality education when they're jammed together with 40 other students, many with special needs or ESL requirements. We will increase programs for adult education and skills retraining. A good education will help all Albertans get a good job and it benefits our economy and our society. We will not slash spending on social programs for seniors and vulnerable Albertans. Our fa families need a strong social safety net, especially in these difficult and unpredictable times. Alberta Liberals will not burn down the house just to repair the roof, as some other pol uh, political party leaders are indicating is the right solution. We will protect our environment for today and for future generations. We will make polluters pay. There's been a very important Supreme Court decision released today that that puts the onus on, on uh, cleanup on companies where that onus should be, not on Alberta taxpayers. We will enforce strong penalties against development that damages our land, air, and water. We believe climate change is real, is a real crisis of our generation. We will implement policies that reduce carbon emissions across all sectors and work toward meeting our climate change goals. We believe in an inclusive, tolerant and progressive Alberta. We support your right to live your individual lives as you choose. 
That is no matter the color of your skin, where you were born, your gender identity or sexual orientation, or which God you worship. We do not support calls for separation by a few angry people. We know that the majority of Albertans love their province, and we know they love their country. We want Alberta to stay in Canada and for, a, and for us to build a better life for all of us. But we know times are tough, but Albertans are tough. We will meet the challenges and we will rebound as we have many times in the past. We have done that before and we will do it again. Alberta Liberals will be there to help Albertans pull through these difficult times. As the province gets closer to the provincial election, we will roll out a detailed campaign, campaign platform. As leader of the Alberta Liberals, let me make my final message clear right here, right now. We want to stop tearing down this province. We want to build up this province with positive solutions. We offer sensible solutions, inclusive values, and a forward-thinking vision for a better life. I look forward to responding to any and all of your questions here today, and I'll stick around uh, afterwards if you want to join me in the break and, and discuss any of these policies with you. I'm really uh, uh, proud and honored to, to be with you and uh, leaders of our, of our province here today, and thank you very much for having me. Well, thank you for your speech. And uh, we really appreciate you joining the table at our uh, meeting here this morning. Uh, as I said earlier, I think it uh, really shows a lot of uh, uh, the process in which we're trying to establish a relationship with the provincial government uh, and our next premier uh, by having you uh, join our meeting this morning. So um, maybe I'll open up questions myself with uh, one that we're going to be asking every leader today. Um, how will you reaffirm and your commitment to this group and how do you see our relationship in the future as Premier and how will you work with our, our Mid-Size Cities Caucus? Well, it's, it's about a philosophy of, of treating you as a, an equal level of government, giving you the tools to provide the services for your citizens, your, excuse me, you are the leaders of the level of government that's closest to the people, that provides most of the services that we depend on every day. And so our philosophy is to really give you the tools to do that, to, to stop treating you as children in a, in a, in a constitutional setup that, that gives you no constitutional uh, powers. So to change that, that paradigm so that you're, you're treated as partners with the provincial government in delivering those services for Albertans and giving you more flexibility to do that. So for example, the, as I mentioned, stable and, f and predictable funding and MSI formula or, or funding formula that really allows you to plan your next f number of years, not just planning from year to year and having to uh, scramble every year when the province decides to uh, to tell you what they're gonna be providing you. Also important with infrastructure and transportation funding, as I mentioned. And giving you some flexibility to plan your budgets over a, a, a two or three or five year cycle so that if, if revenues increase and you've got more, more revenue in a boom time but construction costs are high, you can save that money and spend it in a downturn or, or uh, to put the cart before the horse, perhaps you, you, you spend in a downturn but then repay that money when revenues are higher and construction costs are higher. You can save in construction costs in, 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 a, in a, a, a down economy. So much more flexibility for you and recognition of your leadership and uh, an equal status in Alberta. Okay, thank you. Well, we've prepared four questions or some questions for today and some of you did allude that you uh, answered them via email, but we still would like to uh, have, the, have you asked them or answer them today? Sure. So um, we'll just go around the table, I think. Uh, and we're, again, we're gonna go with uh, state your name and what municipality you're from so that we can get it out on the floor. 
Over here. Sure, and I think I'm, I'm uh, the first on the list this time. Uh, Bill Given, Mayor, City of Grand Prairie. David, thanks so much for being here uh, today uh, to present to us. Uh, appreciated hearing you reference MSI and the uh, commitment that you have to, I think you said, provincially legislated, predictable, stable funding source. Um, you know, in light of the uh, solution, I guess, for Edmonton and Calgary uh, through the city charters, uh, the question, I guess, uh, that I would sort of redirect to is, how would you see engaging with this group of leaders to define what that solution for Alberta's other municipalities look like? What would you see that, uh, that dialogue looking like? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, just as an introduction, we were disappointed that MSI or, or new stable predictable funding for, from every other municipality other than Calgary and Edmonton hasn't been hasn't been uh, finalized by this government. Uh, we think it should have been done a long time ago. There's been talk for years of, of renovating and updating that formula, and it's it's nice that Calgary and Edmonton got uh, got some finality there, but it, it's left you guys ha hanging, and, and, and I really think it should have been in done, done a long uh, time ago. Uh, so what I want to emphasizes we want to work with you to understand your needs and what you require from the provincial government in terms of that stable predictable funding i won't i, I don't want to dictate the details of what that might be but suffice to say that as government we would work to immediately uh, negotiate that funding framework with you right away and get that off the table so that you can go about your your day your year and your decade and plan for your for the gr growth and development of your communities but that that stability and, and predictability is is really important and and i think there's something to be said for the formula that the government has come to uh, uh conclude with calgary and edmonton in terms of sharing in the upside and sharing in the downside we all have to share in the downside as well as share in the upside on, on, the, on a personal level, but also on a, on a government level as revenues go up and down. We are a bit concerned that the downside baseline for Calgary and Edmonton is quite a bit lower than those cities are used to. So I think you probably got some concerns that that, that funding level will be lower if and when this government or the next uh, concludes that. But if we form government, we'll make sure that it, that it's it's, it's, it's legislated, it's locked in, it's not subject to regulation or orders in council. You, you'll, you'll be able to, to uh, rely on that. And, and, we, and we really want to provide you the financial tools and treat you as adults at the table. So that, uh, because as I, as I mentioned several times, you guys provide the, the real services that most Albertans access on a daily basis. Thank you. Thank you. Over here. Uh, thank you very much. I really do appreciate you coming in, coming in today and speaking to us. Uh, my name is Mayor John Stewart from the City of Beaumont. Um, one of the big key drivers on all of our mind is, is the state of our provincial economy. Um, as you know, the mid-sized cities is made up of uh, 22 communities totaling almost a million people. Um, and we stretch into the four corners of the province. So we really do feel the impact of the downturn in the oil and gas industry and, and the need to diversify our economy. Um, so I guess our question is, is how, will your how will your party partner with the mid-sized cities to be able to continue to diversify our economy and create an environment in which investors can be confident to come in and invest in our communities and return us to prosperity? Well, I think number one, I want to emphasize that we're, as a party, we're not, uh, we don't believe generally in business subsidies in in handing out government sub subsidies and pi picking winners and losers, so uh, creating a huge fund and then deciding who's going to get the money. We believe more in creating those business in that in business environment so that companies can start up themselves and be successful. So I, I mentioned the small business three year th three year small business tax holiday, so that lots of people are starting new businesses these days. But we know that the first three or four years is the hardest time. So to to Take, take, remove that burden for the first three or four years, I think go a long way to helping those small businesses survive, thrive, grow, employ more people in your communities. So that's an example of, of uh, creating that business environment. We really have to look at 
at the reg level of regulation we have in this province, all, all, most every regulation was adopted at some point in time for some valid reason. But I think we need to look more regularly at the regulatory environment and really make sure that, that the regulations in place are working properly for us uh, today and, and uh, aren't just uh, on the books and causing problems uh, from uh, a decade or two before. Uh, there is a there is room for uh, tax credits and and, and modifying our, our tax environment to encourage the development of other businesses. So I mentioned the film and TV industry. I know that uh, up until a few years ago, there was quite a lot of growth in that in that industry, and it provides a lot of good jobs. But uh, the government hasn't been very supportive of of that industry in terms of, of uh, offering those tax credits can get, that can get those businesses and that work back here in Alberta from BC or Ontario. So that's an example of an, in, an industry that can operate really anywhere in, in any community where you've got some good infrastructure for that. Uh, and another thing that I, that I mentioned in my, in my uh, answers here is breaking down interprovincial trade barriers. It's, it's really shocking how difficult it is to trade Interprovincially, uh, people now talk about how in, in in some sectors of the economy it's cheaper to trade with Europe or the U.S. than with Saskatchewan. It was uh, speaking with uh, with the, the someone from uh, Lloyd Minster uh, last night, and and certainly they know uh, what uh, what the the problems are with uh, interprovincial trade barriers when they're right on the provincial boundary. There, we need to really work to break those down and cooperate better and, and, and remove those bar barriers. So the bottom line is creating the, the, uh, the tax and regulatory environment to let, to let uh, small and, and medium and large businesses thrive and, and hire more people in your communities. And transportation is also, as you said, you, your communities are, are spread across the whole province. We have to make sure that our transportation in, uh, uh, infrastructure is is up to the task of moving goods and services and people around the province. And, and also uh, things like rural broadband or proper connectivity. We've got to uh, make sure that we're jumping into the 21st century with two feet and make sure that our communities are, are well set up for the information economy. People can work anywhere in the world now in, uh, in the tech sector. There's a, a new startup in Calgary that's hiring tech workers to do outsourced work from Silicon Valley and create more jobs in downtown Calgary with the extra, the reams of extra office space we have there now. So that's an example of some uh, crea creative solutions. Well, thank you for touching on that. I think um, something that we, we're trying to instill in all the leaders today is that the strength of this caucus is built on the diversity of each of our municipalities that we bring to the, the you know, we're, we represent, um, as John said, almost a million people in Alberta and um, from all corners of the province, so. Um, another question? Oh. Yes. Uh, good morning, Mr. Khan. Uh, my name is Linda Maddies and I'm representing Stony Plain. My question is with regards to transportation and uh, so basically our Alberta is growing and the diversification plan for our province is creating opportunities for transportation growth. This growth creates the need for additional and improved transportation infrastructure, including municipal roads, highways, overpasses, bridges, and public transit to sustain economic and social benefits for Alberta. As municipalities are limited in their ability to collect other revenues outside of traditional property taxes, what is your party's approach to managing and funding transportation infrastructure, including public transit? and your party's position on provincial responsibility to support municipalities in revenue sharing and investment? Yeah, that's a great question. And as I've stressed before, transportation and infrastructure are key to economic growth, to the health and well-being of our communities, and to getting those goods and services moving around the province and abroad. So we want to make sure that, that revenues, including carbon tax revenues, if we decide that the carbon tax is the best way to, to focus on reducing carbon emissions, we want to make sure that those carbon tax revenues are used wisely and diverted to 
to uh, the infrastructure products projects that your communities choose. We don't want to be choosing for you, and you know best what your communities need. We want to support you in that. Uh, we've also we'll also be discussing expanding the revenue generation ab uh, abilities of municipalities, subject to specific limitations. The biggest limitation we think is that you're all elected. Well, the CAOs aren't, but the mayors are. You're all elected every four years. You're accountable to voters. So why is it that you're treated like children and have to run a, a balanced budget and only have one revenue source? I think if we give you more tools to raise revenue in diff different, more creative ways, if your voters decide that you're overreaching or taxing them too much or they don't like what you're doing, you're going to get voted out. So the, the, the limitation really is built into our democratic municipal values. But we want to look at, at more creative ways of giving you more power to, to raise money in the way that your community sees fit. You'll know that, uh, that Calgary and Edmonton in, in the city charters now have uh, their own uh, debt servicing, uh, debt and debt servicing uh, regulations that they can implement after public hearings. So we want, want to consider granting your, you, the mid-sized city mayors and CAOs, the same ability. We also support the, uh, the establishment of that $50 million annual program to fund significant regional infrastructure projects uh, that support economic development. And uh, we know that starting in 2022, one third will be available to you guys and I guess smaller municipalities outside of Calgary and Edmonton to wanna make sure that there's uh, that kind of a fund. There's so many important infrastructure product projects and transportation I was talking with our uh, mayors of, uh, of Canmore and Banff last night about the uh, great transit system they've developed now between their communities and up to Lake Louise. That's just going to build economic capacity and allow people to, to really generate uh, business and, and jobs and opportunities in that corridor. I know Airdrie's got better uh, connections to Calgary and uh, Beaumont, Leduc, Nisku, uh, Edmonton has a has a lot more challenges in terms of different uh, uh, jurisdictions and different municipalities. You've got to work together, and so those that uh, regional infrastructure is really key to, uh, so that we're not just all concentrating on our own backyard, but are looking at our neighbors and and trying to create those those connections that will ben benefit the economy. Great, thank you. I think we have time for one more. Right here. Sorry, go ahead. Good day, sir. My name is uh, Jeff Peddle. I'm acting mayor for the municipality of Wood Buffalo. Community safety and police remains a priority throughout the province. With the municipal police funding review currently underway, how can the mid-sized cities work with your party to build a common understanding of the issue, constraints, and opportunities to develop a well-informed and equitable solutions to the policing system and related funding? Well, we all know that uh, in this downturn, property crime especially and crime related to, to drug abuse has gone up. Uh, many Albertans are struggling. There's not enough mental health services. So just as, a, as an opening, we really believe in addressing the root causes as Alberta Liberals. So we need, as I mentioned in my remarks, we want to uh, put much more funding into mental health, uh, drug addiction and treatment programs, uh, community programs for youth, things, uh, uh, health care and education also go to, to uh, addressing the root causes of crime, both ur urban and rural crime, which we've seen increased in the, in the last few years especially. So number one is to, and long term, and having a forward thinking vision that, that we have is to address those root causes with solutions that will get people off the street, get them the mental uh, uh, and physical treatments that they need, help them uh, rehabil rehabilitate them from a drug problem they might have, uh, and, and help them uh, get back to work and get back to their families. But uh, yeah, community safety and policing is a priority, and we will want to consult with all of you, again, who are the experts in the area of your communities in terms of ur urban policing, what you guys need to better support your police forces, be them, uh, m most of you will have uh, the RCMP as your 
police force, but we need to to equip them with with, with and and make and make sure that they're properly funded and have the tools to to uh, provide more safety to your to your communities, especially in this downturn where there is a lot more, uh, especially property crime. It may not be uh, there, may, there may not be as much. Uh, uh, physical violence crime, but property crime is really traumatic for people and, and really causes a lot of problems. So we support current funding models where appropriate with the understanding that financial strategies must be flexible and we must be open to new initiatives. So I, and I touched on the, on the root causes that, that it, it's really critical at, in the end to address the root causes. Increased funding for police services will help in the short term, but it's it's no strategy to just fund policing without addressing why there's increased crime, why there's people just wandering down the street, breaking into cars randomly because they're high on meth and they can't think straight and they're just looking for their next their next hit. So really want to to uh, stress that uh, that long term uh, addressing of uh, of the the underlying problems that are causing this. But we really recognize that it's a problem. It's a problem in, in urban centers like Calgary. There's a huge issue. I live in downtown central Calgary. There's a huge issue around the, the safe injection site at the Sheldon Schumer. I know uh, in Lethbridge, there's real problems around uh, the, uh, the Arches facility uh, in terms of uh, just extra crime. Now, they're doing amazing work in reducing deaths by opioid or overdose, but we need to address the other component, which is the, it can tend to create uh, concentrations of drug users and then crime in the areas where those safe injection sites are implemented. So there needs to be a lot more consultation with the community and perhaps more direct funding of, of uh, police programs around those safe consumption sites so that we can, we're saving lives, but we're also providing you mayors and CAOs with the resources and tools to deal with the inevitable fallout from some of those uh, some of those facilities. Thank you. Great. Well, thank you. Um, we want to uh, show our appreciation for you uh, joining us today and last night. And uh, I heard you say you're going to join us for coffee. Yeah. We're about to take a break. So um, thank you very much for joining our Thanks, meeting Jeff. today. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for, thank you. Thanks for having me. We have a little gift from Cochrane. Oh, thanks. I'm going to hand it to you this way. <laughs> oh, selfless plug. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, the coffee? The coffee from. All right, thank you. Thanks. We'll, we'll exit stage right today and we'll oh, yeah, stop for. <laughs> Fresh. Run out of, or I can always use more coffee. It Thank you. the world.